Hello everyone and welcome to the Speculative Wildlife Research Center, where we reimagine creatures and monsters from all realms of fiction through the lens of speculative biology. Today we are taking a look at the Hydra. No, not you! The Lernian Hydra, a monstrous, multi-headed serpent from classical mythology that was famously slain by Heracles. Or Hercules, if you happen to be Roman. This one is, without a doubt, one of the most famous monsters from Greek mythology, and one with many parallels across different cultures and mythologies, so it has more than earned its place in our channel. And thanks, of course, to all of you who asked to see it, as well as our patrons and channel members who voted for this episode. If you too are enjoying our videos, Please consider supporting the channel by liking and subscribing, joining our Patreon, or becoming a channel member to get early looks at all our creatures, and vote on future episodes. Now, without further ado, let's get started. As dangerous as the animals living out there in the world can be, few of them ever do more than what they need to survive. Hence why, when humanity sees fit to destroy the monsters that lurk out there in the world, the nature of the real monsters easily reveals itself. The Hydra, or Pseudodraconis eneacephala, is an animal closely related to sea slugs and other gastropods. These enormous freshwater mollusks are found all around the Mediterranean but some of the most numerous and well-known populations can be found near the region of Lerna, in southern Greece, famous for its massive lake, springs and rivers, which create a rich and fertile soil where herbs and flowers grow aplenty. The hydras are characterized by their long body crowned by a series of facial appendages developed from the soft tissue found around their mouth. The appendages of a hydra will grow gradually throughout their life, and will do so at different rates, with juvenile hydra displaying lower amounts of facial tentacles and only presenting their full set of nine appendages upon reaching maturity. These appendages are quite muscular and agile, superficially similar to the arms of an octopus, although much less dexterous. This is because their main function is moving in a single, fast and deadly strike, thus having a much more reduced range of movement compared to similar appendages. This is, however, enough to let them fulfill their main objective, quickly striking at both prey and potential predators, while the Hydra's soft body stays hidden and protected inside a small cave hole or tunnel near the water's edge. The appendages are connected to a very potent venom gland, similar to that of cone snails, intended to quickly kill animals before they have a chance to either escape or harm the hydra. This venom is injected into the other animal's body through stingers, modified teeth from the hydra's radula, after which the hydra will feed at its leisure. This process takes a lot, as the hydra will very slowly scrape food particles using its radula, with the animal's decomposition beginning while the hydra is still eating. While this will not deter nor harm the hydra, it is the source of the terrible smell that sometimes is said to characterize their habitat. The hydra is so well protected from attacks by other animals, in fact, that many small water-dwelling animals have taken to living near the hulls of the hydra in order to hide from their predators. The appendages of the hydra will provide a great protection, these animals themselves being too small to attract the attention of the tentacled beast. One of the most notable of these animals is the one known as Carcinos, a word simply meaning crab and any potential predators of the Carcinos, including certain fish, birds and mammals, will quickly be dispatched and devoured by the Hydra. 
This well-protected shelter has led to these crops becoming much larger as a result, finding a good source of food in the hydra spray and no longer needing to hide from other predators. This has led to them gaining an advantage from their increased size, mainly in regards to fertility and intraspecies competition. The Hydra's appendages are also notorious for their incredible regeneration capabilities, similar to those observed in other marine gastropods, most notably the sea slug Elysia marginata. While quick and precise, these tentacles can sometimes be harmed or even removed by quick and smart enough predators, the mimicry presented by the heads being intended to drive such animals away. When this happens, the appendages will regenerate to usable condition in a matter of days, growing back to their full size not long after. Most dramatically, the Hydra can survive the removal of all of its appendages, including an important part of its body, and still regenerate from such damage. While it will certainly harm it and leave it unable to hunt, the injured Hydra will survive by feeding on dead animals and vegetable matter, avoiding predation thanks to its venom gland, which will passively release venom through its skin, using a similar system to the inking of other gastropods. This also serves in cases when the animal should be trapped, which can happen when earthquakes or landslides cause the tunnels of the Hydra to collapse. In these cases, the Hydra can fully autotomize, removing its head from its own body, in order to escape and regenerate. In ancient times, the lands where the Hydras lived were considered to be sacred places, venerated and held as the sites of important rituals, for they were believed to be entrances to the underworld itself, and to the rivers that act as a path to it. However, the people that lived in the area were invaded by a warring civilization known as the Heracleids, that took their lands for their own and soon took to killing the Hydras for sport or as part of initiation and coming of age rites. These animals would be attacked by large groups of warriors and hunters, their appendages cut off and their venom used to drench the warriors' arrowheads. While the venom's potency made these useless for hunting, they were amazing weapons for war and assassinations. In fact, there are accounts of people drenching clothes and cloaks in Hydra venom, which would be then gifted to people they wished to eliminate. After the Hydra's valuable venom was obtained, the Heracleids would burn the stumps with a torch and the appendages would be burned in a pyre to prevent them from releasing their venom. This was done due to an event that took place after these peoples first conquered the Lernian lands, when these warriors used their spears, clubs and bows to kill a large group of hydras. The venom glands of these animals were destroyed by the Heraclid weapons, releasing their venom into the water stream. While diluted, its potency made it strong enough to cause the death of many animals living and drinking from the water, including large schools of fish, causing a stench and sprouts of infectious diseases that lasted for months afterwards. And that's it for speculative biology look into the Hydra. And yes, I've gone and done it again. I turned another creature into an invertebrate, so let's go straight ahead to the why. The Hydra is, of course, famous for its multiple heads and its ability to regenerate them, which really complicated the task of killing it, but it is also known for its potent venom, which poisoned the land around it. So beginning with the multiple heads, as we've mentioned before, is not an evolutionarily advantageous trait for an organism. After all, having different, 
separate structures in charge of processing sensorial information and taking decisions regarding this information would be a hindrance, as these heads would receive contradicting information and respond differently to such information, which can be a very bad thing in situations that require split-second reactions and decisions. Especially problematic once we account for the need of these heads to communicate information to each other. This is noticeable in real-life polycephalic animals, such as, quite relevant for the Hydra, snakes. So I felt something like the tentacles of octopuses worked much better to represent a bunch of heads, which is why I decided to go with that. Of course, the idea of using polycephalic snakes was indeed considered, even suggested by some comments and patrons, but I believe it was not a great fit for this wild animal. And I'm emphasizing wild, for I believe there is still an interesting way for us to use this concept when we take a look at a future creature. And then there is the whole regeneration thing, which led to some really cool suggestions in the comments, including echinoderms and amphibians like axolotls. But the regeneration capabilities of these animals, while impressive, are quite slow for what this creature required. That's why I decided to go with a gastropod, as some sea slugs, as shown earlier, are capable of regenerating their entire body in less than a month. Add to that the well-known venomous capabilities of mollusks, including the venom of cone snails, and so the final design took form in no time. So I hope you guys enjoyed the end result, and if you did, you should go and check out the other videos on mythological beings we have made on the channel before. And remember, if there's any type of creature you'd like me to give the speculative biology treatment in the show, please sound off in the comments below. Thank you all for watching, and see you next time on the Speculative Wildlife Research Center.